I think America is going through a real crisis, a crisis of identity, a crisis of trying to figure out what it is, what it stands for, what it actually represents. For a very long time, the ideas uh, at the founding of America, the ideas that made America what it is, I think the greatest country in human history, I know that might not be popular in this audience, uh, the freest country by many, uh, by many, many measures, and certainly the most powerful economically and militarily in human history. The ideas that made that America possible have been in decline now for decades. One could argue even a century. And that decline has reached a, uh, a real pivot point. It, it is now uh, a, a reality that nobody in the political spectrum in the United States represents what were the ideals that made America great. There is no uh, there's no political voice for, if you will, the founding fathers of America. There's no, uh, there's no voice today for the concept of individual rights, for the concept of freedom, for the concept of liberty in the United States. There is a struggle and a battle between a left and a right on who will control our lives and in what way that control will manifest itself. One of the striking things about this midterm election is that while the economy will dominate, yes, I, I agree, that this is going to be determined, the Republicans will probably win, certainly in the House, possibly even in the Senate, primarily because the economy is doing so badly uh, under, under Joe Biden. The, the, the absurdity of that is that nothing would have been different if Republicans were running things right now. Indeed, many of the inflationary pressures that exist today uh, were caused by Donald Trump's policy of writing uh, massive checks to everybody, bailing everybody out during COVID, and generally increasing government spending throughout all four years of his administration. Indeed, Donald Trump argued for an infrastructure bill far, far greater than anything Joe Biden actually passed. Indeed, one of the things that, it, that is, is, is true globally today, and, and true, you see, you're living in it right now in the UK, that there is a complete consensus about economics between left and right. Uh, you know, uh, uh, trust tries to cut taxes a little bit tries maybe to bring in a little bit market, uh, of markets into, uh, into the UK uh, uh, you know, political establishment, and she gets crushed for even proposing such a preposterous idea of maybe cutting the top marginal tax rate of 45%, which makes imminent sense as you go into a recession to cut the top marginal tax rate if you care about economic growth ultimately, but she can't defend it because the consensus among the people, the consensus among the intellectuals, the consensus among everybody, is we need big government involvement in the economy. And that is true in the UK, and that is true in the United States, and that is true in Europe. There's complete consensus about economic issues. We're all way to the left of center on economics. Everybody is, even Elizabeth, even Trust now, Liz Trust has been brought to her knees. Now she is going to be left of center on economic issues. So what's the difference between the Republicans and Democrats? What is the battle about? The battle is about cultural issues. That's how left and right are defining themselves. And to a large degree, that is true of the United Kingdom as well. Uh, here, the big difference between the left and the right, to a large extent, is around these cultural issues. Uh, the, the popularity of Boris Johnson uh, in the last election was not due to his revolutionary economic plans. It was due to his nationalism and his conservative cultural views. While shifting left, on everything economic. Uh, and we're seeing that in the United States, exactly the same phenomena. We're seeing the cultural issues as defining the two political parties. The cultural war is a defining war between the two political parties. Economics, in a sense, is irrelevant. Economic outcome might be relevant, that is the, the you know, swing based on how the economy is doing. But economic policy of the Biden administration and the Trump administration is almost identical. There's almost no differentiation, and I would venture that whether you vote for Labour, whether you vote Conservative, um, in the short run at least, there's going to be very little difference in terms of economic policy. Yeah, I wanted to put this uh, woman's point to you. She's talking about you know, Americans still, ordinary Americans, if not their politicians, still um, are very in favor of their rights and their arms. I mean, give another example, a lot of them in certain states didn't tolerate lockdown, not going to tolerate the government bossing them about. Isn't there some optimism? There? You found? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> Not for me, anyway. Um, 
No, I mean, the, the very idea that there were lockdowns in the United States of America is so horrific that, yes, about a year after the lockdowns were started, a few people rose up and protested over it. But the very idea that Americans, Democrats, Republicans, anybody, would allow the state to lock them down over a virus is so shadowy that it turned me from optimist or pessimist about America because uh, I couldn't imagine, I could have, if you told me that there was gonna be a virus that primarily kills old people, right, it does, um, but keeps the young people pretty much safe, um, <laughs> that we would lock down the entire society. We would lock down everybody and lock them at home and that the Americans would just shrug and go, fine, that's okay. And, and maybe a year later they would remember, oh, maybe we have some liberties and maybe we have some freedoms and maybe we should object. Uh, it's just, I would have never predicted that. And indeed, the CDC never predicted it. And it's why in not a single um, plan that the CDC had prepared in advance for pandemics was ever a lockdown ever considered. And in that sense, the West uh, didn't use the CDC manual. They used the Communist Party of China's manual to deal with pandemics. We all became China, like that. China has won the cultural battle, like that. Uh, we're, we're economically moving towards China, and we dealt with the pandemic like China. And it's, it's uh, I know this is not a popular view in Europe, but that's, that's pretty horrific. Uh, the fact that our individual liberties can be taken away by the government like that by scaremongering us into our homes. And look, I'm not a denier of COVID. I'm vaccinated fully, at least three. Uh, I haven't done my fourth one fifth yet. I'm not a denier that this was an awful virus. But this is like the worst way to deal with it possible. And the fact that of all the individual rights that Americans possess, the one that they are most adamant about is that they can hold on to their M16s is not inspiring me. Um, if, if, they, if they held on to their First Amendment as, as strongly as they hold on to those M16s, I would be a lot more inspired. But you're seeing an attack on the First Amendment, a dramatic attack on freedom of speech. And again, we're way ahead of, of, of you guys because you guys have hate speech laws and things that violate free speech right off the bat. But in the United States, um, we're seeing it both on the left and the right. Clearly, Donald Trump was egregiously hostile towards freedom of speech um, uh, to the extent of, of uh, you know, going after Jeff Bezos because he owned the Washington Post, because the Washington Post wrote the story that was negative towards Donald Trump. Um, uh, the left, with its wokeness and its cancel culture, is clearly does not believe in freedom of speech. There is a real attack on freedom of speech in the United States today, and uh, I, I wish Americans would be holding on to that. Uh, I think, and, and not to mention separation of state and religion, which I think brings us back maybe to abortion, uh, which the, which the not there's no particularly uh, strong, powerful constituency to hold on to that. The left would like to impose their uh, kind of religion on us and the right would, would like to impose their kind of religion on us, but impose religion on us, both parties want to do. Is it, is it worth thinking about the fact that most Americans are surely not die-hard Trumpistas or blue-haired woke horrors either, and you know, probably not gonna wanna pick up a gun to defend either of those uh, positions? Well, I think Aren't most people normal and have normal, you know, idiosyncratic views on a range of issues? Definitely people are normal, most people are normal, and, and the, the fact that, you, you know, we, we color these states red and blue, but in every red state there are big pockets of blue, and in every blue state there are big pockets of red, and a civil war is not between the states, because as somebody said, Texas, Austin, Texas, uh, which is in many regards uh, kind of the heart of Texas, is very, very blue, right? It's very, very democratic. So, so the, the, the civil war would be within the states, it wouldn't be across the states. I don't see much prospects uh, of a civil war because I, I will say with regard to, uh, with regard to uh, uh, the scary part is that such a large percentage of Republicans who support Trump are, uh, you know, willing to reject the election, right? Are willing to overthrow an election in order to bring him back to power. That is the one, I, when, with Trump out of the equation, I agree, civil war is very unlikely. On the other hand, not to be too optimistic here. Um, <laughs> on the other hand, I think America's decline is, is, is an ember. That is, I do think America is declining, and this relates to the question about cultural war relating to economics. I think it certainly does because I think the culture would distract from the fact that America is in decline economically. 
economic growth in America. Everybody cheered when Donald Trump said we had the greatest economy in history. Could we grow it 2% a year? Pathetic. That's <laughs> all I can say about that. Um, uh, American economy is in decline, and uh, the only good thing one could say is the Chinese economy is in decline even more so, right? So I think global economy is, is going to be troubled for the next few decades. Um, and again, this is all kind of distracting from the real challenge which we face, which you mentioned uh, regarding the Civil War, um, which is what is America? Is America the principles of liberty and freedom and individual liberty and so on? Uh, which is supposedly one side, I'm not sure which side, because I don't think that is represented at all on the American political map today. Or is America woke? Or is America, as uh, what's her name, uh, the, the congresswoman from Georgia said, is America a, uh, a Christian nation? Uh, you know, a, a, a fundamentally Christian. So you've got tribalism on the one side, left tribalism and right tribalism on the one side, which is Democrats and Republicans both are now tribal and collectivistic and anti-American constitution of the Bill of Rights. And I, by the way, would be willing to fight for the death of the Bill of Rights. Um, you know, it's important. Yes, you might find one aspect of it to be irrelevant, but there are a number of aspects there that, that keep the country alive and keep, I think, Western civilization going. But the, the, both those aspects, both left and right today are tribal. And there is no representative on the political map today, or on the cultural map, not just the political map, the cultural map, for the individualism represented by the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. There's no representative for the kind of individualism represented even by somebody who I consider relatively mediocre, a Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan could not win in the Republican Party today, and that is a travesty. Now, Ronald Reagan is not my ideal, right? But he sure is better than anybody else in the Republican Party right now. What about Kanye West? <laughs> oh yeah, let me just say something about Kanye West. Unify it. I mean, Kanye West, is, it, it's sad because I, I think Kanye West has real mental problems. I mean, real, I mean, no, this is not funny. I'm not meaning this as a joke. This is documented. He's, he's got bipolar or whatever it is. The guy is mentally not there. And the fact that we, we idolize him and put him on a, on, a, on a pedestal does not help his mental problems. Uh, it would be good if he got treatment and we didn't worship him. I think generally, who the hell cares what a singer, as good as he might be, I don't get him, but as good as he might be, thinks about anything. Why do we care about what singers and movie actors or sports figures think about politics? They're irrelevant to the political debate. I mean, they're relevant because people ad admire them be above and beyond anything reasonable. But, you know, they are not shaping the world. What's shaping the world are the intellectuals. What is shaping the world are the professors at universities and public pundits and uh, even the politicians don't shape the world. They just, they, in a sense, they're just mouthpieces for the intellectuals behind them. So if you want, if you want somebody to object to and if you want guidance, it, it's always been the intellectuals. It's all, that, that's where it comes from. And uh, these celebrities, I couldn't care less what any of them said. <laughs> If some of them said something rational and reasonable, <laughs> that would be nice. But given that they almost always, whatever side they happen to be on the political map, unreasonable and completely, uh, you know, completely nuts, why would I care? Um, so um, let me just clarify. Uh, I am very opposed to Trump. I've been opposed to Trump from 2015 on. Uh, the fact that he didn't concede the election wasn't surprising at all. He told us he wouldn't concede it in advance. Uh, he is the worst thing to happen in American politics, maybe ever. Uh, he has destroyed the Republican Party as a credible alternative to the Democrats. Uh, I'm almost as anti-Biden and Hillary Clinton as I am anti-Trump, so it's not like I'm for these others because I'm anti-Trump. Uh, I, am, I am for an alternative to both. I, I, I disagree. Um, uh, with my uh, fellow panelists here because I think that what Biden has done is took the worst of Trump's policies um, and, uh, and it doubled up on them. Uh, globalization was one of the greatest things that's ever happened to the Western world. Uh, we have benefited massively from globalization and I know this is an unpopular view today, both on left and right, but we've all a far better off because of globalization and the move against, away from globalization is one that we are going to regret uh, for, for a very long time. So 
Um, it's not that I uh, am ignoring 40% of the population who support Trump. I'm ignoring 90% of the population. <laughs> <laughs> and the people who support Biden. I get them all wrong. And this is the point I was trying to make, and I'll end with this because we're running out of time. The, ultimately, the fundamental question for America is, is it the land of the Declaration of Independence? Is it about individualism? Is it about liberty? Is it about freedom? And there is no political voice today for that perspective. At the left and the right are the same when it comes to their collectivistic view of what America is about. It's all about tribes, it's all about groups, it's all about identity politics. I agree completely, whether it's white or, or alternative. Uh, and there is no voice today for the, the, the core ideas that made America what it is today. And in that sense, America will suffer economically as it evolves away from the land of entrepreneurs and the land of individuals. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.